Well, it's only a matter of weeks now until the 2024 Great Electric Train Show takes place on the 12th and 13th of October at the Marshall Arena in Elton Keynes. And like this year, I'm really looking forward to the event. It's going to be another great event. Always enjoy the Great Electric Train Show. And it's, we've got a fantastic lineup again, I think, this time. We do, of course. The star of the show is, of course, Making Tracks 4, which is not just what people saw at Chester Cathedral, but they're also, as we speak now, extending it again. They are, yeah. So instead of extending length this time, though, they're extending the width across Watford Junction Station. So I think one of the things um, with Watford Junction is to make the layout work as part of the world record layout for Model World Live earlier this year, and they had to restrict themselves to a two foot wide baseboard, mm -hmm. which meant they only really had the actual platforms at Watford Junction. But if you go to the real location, there's so much more going off at Watford to actually make it a city centre location. So I suppose this will be like the Watford version of what we saw with Milton Keynes making tracks through where you've got this station, but you've got these massive buildings that literally just overlook it, won't you? But in this particular case, it's not station buildings, it's high-rise accommodation. Well, it's actually a bit of both. So I think that's the one thing that's going to make uh, Watford Junction really stand out from Milton Keynes. Is that Milton Keynes, the station was still at the front of the baseboards, so you kind of immerse yourself in the station, looking over like the embankment like you would at the real place. Mm. Whereas at Watford Junction, they're actually putting an extra two front now in front of the station they've already built and they'll have all the massive multi-story office block that sits above Watford Junction Station's actual entrance at the bottom. They put in the Watford DC lines as well mm -hmm. for their terminus platforms that sit alongside the main line platforms and then behind that put in another 850 millimetres of scenery so just over another two and a bit foot behind the layout which is where all these high-rise flats that are currently being built at Watford are actually going to be modelled as well. Amazing. So you're really going to have the model railway in between everything else. Yeah, it's literally going to get sandwiched between a massive, great multi-storey building for the station building, which is going to be sort of up high from the baseboard around here. And then you're going to look across this big, long, scale-length model of Watford Junction platforms for the main line mm. across to all these even taller um, multi-storey flats, which are all being built. It's just it's going to be an incredible landscape. Look, everything that they do is always impressive. Road junction, also road cutting was fantastic when we saw it at Chester. I'm looking forward to seeing these huge high-rise buildings and so forth because it is going to be different again. And then, of course, Bushy Viaduct. We saw that at Model World Live. We saw that at Chester. That's also fantastic. And this year, of course, the best thing to know about making tracks is whilst last year in 2023 we had 152 feet of it, combining number one, two, and three all together. That's right. This year it's just making tracks for 64 or thereabouts feet. So it's not going to take up the entire width. It'll be nice and manageable, but it's still going to be our centrepiece. Absolutely, yes. And then we're planning to have all that stocked properly with West Coast mainline trains, like you would see running through Watford Junction. And we do all the preparation at the minute with Phil and Pete to actually make sure we've got the right trains set up to go as well. A few extras, of course, because we all like a few extras. Of course. This is rule one of model railways at the end of the day. <laughs> but we're trying to put as many authentic West Coast mainline trains together as possible. Absolutely. Now, moving on to our other layouts, we've also got some amazing layouts which have featured in the pages of Homie Magazine for the past 12 months. And I think the few that spring to mind straight away, especially ones I photographed, Gressley Bridge. Yes, oh, Gressley Bridge is fantastic. That wonderful layout, the fact that it's set at night yeah. in that wonderful location in autumn as well. In my opinion, it's got everything going for it. It's definitely one of the most unique layouts that I've seen on the exhibition circuit for a long while. And it's so great that we're bringing that down from Scotland with Diesel North, by the way, as well, which we also had in the magazine. Yeah. So having two layouts from Scotland coming here is going to be fantastic. It certainly is, and, and I believe as well that actually Gresty Bridge is going to have some new features in some of his locos as well, because he's, he's working with uh, TRS trains, uh, so that some of the locos working on Gresty Bridge will actually have exhaust flumes coming out of them as well, which had a whole new dimension to that night scene as well. You can imagine the lights are on, loco starts up, the plume of diesel exhaust comes up. It's starting to really... Uh, push forward what you can do with the model our life it really does and one of the things i actually really like about that model is there's always something going on even if at one particular moment you don't think there's a train moving there is because in the back you've got the tamper which is going just from right to left ever so slowly but then some of the cameo scenes you've actually got for example the works team cutting wood cutting trees there's a little bit of movement the lights are always flashing so it is a very interactive layout, even when there's seemingly not much moving. Exactly. And we've got loads of other great layouts as well. I mean, talking of ones that I've been in the photograph this time, there was a, there's a superb Southern Region layout called Redbridge Wharf, which oh, is coming. Absolutely. This is by Winchester Railway Modelers. It's a big, big double O gauge layout. It's got a superb double junction in the middle of it as well. Um, it's got all the um, estuary model, but it's also got all the uh, sleeper works that was there. Um, and it's, it's such a fantastic scene. 
And a bit like I was saying about Wolford Junction, where you're now going to have the station buildings in front of the railway. Mm. And Redbridge has very much got that going off, where the railway kind of swings in from one side, and it, it took right across the back of the scene, uh, before going off back to the storage yard. It's a really nice way to view a model railway, where the model railway becomes part of that total scenery. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, I remember seeing that... Um, at another exhibition back in the I think it was Wardley 2022. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was a wonderful layout there. It drew a lot of attention. Of course, we saw it in the magazine. We got the video feature for the magazine. And you also got the road bridge above the rail bridge, don't Absolutely. you? So it's, you've got these multi levels of, of detail within this estuary as such. Absolutely. So that's another fantastic and big layout. We've also got uh, Charles Welton into the 80s, mm -hmm. which is, again, is another very popular layout on the exhibition circuit. The guys there, they got, um, they basically took a, um, 1950s period model of Charles Welton on the Great Central Railway, uh, which was once, I think it was operated by the Wire Forest Model Railway Group. And then they um, changed all the stock and made some changes to the layout itself. So they could actually go, well, actually, we moved the whole thing forward to just the Great Central stayed open into the diesel era. So where you would have had a rake of 16 ton mineral workings with a 9F, you've now got a rake of HAA hoppers with a class 56 mm. um, and things like that. So it's, 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 again, brilliant stock modeling on it. I know they're always working on new features for the rolling stock as well. And another one of the really big layouts taking part. One of the things I quite admire about that particular layout, and it's something I think that a lot of modelers can keep in mind, is that when you're modelling something, you are allowed to, to say, well, what if? What if steam hadn't finished in 1968? What if that railway hadn't closed in 1972? What if it now was a busy modern main line? It's, it's nice to see layouts which have actually gone on from the known history into somebody's creativity with the history and i quite like that a lot yeah i especially like it when it's done like the the cbm guys have done where actually it's something that's very believable and they've been quite considered about the train choices they made so like, like i mentioned about the 16 ton mineral wagons to the ha hoppers you know they didn't just decide to put something completely different in there mm. well actually these are the traffic types that ran on that line in the 50s let's replicate them but 30 years later absolutely now, talking about main lines and so forth, we're used to double track main lines like the Great Central. But of course, back in the days of steam, when the railways were really the railways, there were some lines that were four tracks. And of course, when you go up north around the Calder Valley, around Huddersfield and so forth, where your old haunts, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that line all the way from um, Huddersfield out toward the Stanish Tunnels, that was four tracks. Yeah. And Millsbridge, that wonderful end gauge lab that we had a few issues ago, that is also coming to get and that is. is a stunning layout where it's literally a town with a railway passing through it it is it's yeah. incredible it really is again it's not just then again like we said before it's that railway in the scene really but it's also the way they've put the color in together for that as well oh, yeah. um you, know, you, you can just imagine that you get sooty by walking down the streets so, you know it's just that kind of place like it was in the 1950s um, like i say I, I used to live around that area so it's very familiar territory for me mm -hmm. um, i'm really looking forward to seeing that kind of show it really is fantastic and it's just it's grime. There's there's not there's no blue sky. There's no green grass. No, it's all that burnt umber browns. It's basically like somebody just got some mud and went all over it. Yeah, it, but it looks amazing. And of course, everything is weathered to suit. You've got scale length trains, and it really is just an, an amazing capture of that particular part of the Pennines. It is indeed. And it's one of a number of engaged layouts we've got coming to the show because we've also got Tithery Junction coming from Bradford Model Railway Club mm -hmm. and that model's the uh, Western England main line in the 1970s, so lots of hydraulics, great traction choice. And um, we've also got a layout called New Vaden Park where it's coming all the way up from Cornwall for the show and that's all modern traction era. Uh, plus we've got that lovely little layout uh, modelling Alston, uh, well based on Alston I should say, because it's not a scale model of Alston, it's based on Alston uh, by Peter Brown which is a much more compact uh, model in engage as well. Mm. So we've got lots of different layout sizes going off for the show because it's not just about the big things, we've got lots of smaller layouts as well. Absolutely. And I think the thing I'm actually looking forward to seeing the most, and of course people who actually read uh, a magazine, whether they be online or physically, they'll be used to this by now, is Dan Emerson is bringing his uh, Barkman NG7 layout, which is, to our knowledge is the first NG7 layout which has been built. Yeah. And he's going to have that on display at Getz, yeah, as well as his own stall showing how he can do his thing. And NG7, of course, or 016.5 as such, it's the same sort of thing. But I'm looking forward to seeing that with a new Barkman range. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. So it looks great in the features, but obviously at this point, we haven't seen Dan's new layout physically yet. And we've obviously seen the photographs of it and what he's doing to actually complete it and get it ready for the show. But actually to see it, again, the way he presents it as well, is really, it's quite exciting to see how he's going to present that at the show. Absolutely. But let's be honest, Getz isn't just about the layouts. It's also about 
the traders, the Absolutely. trade stores, the bargains and so forth. Let's talk about some of those wonderful businesses that are coming along to this show. Indeed. So first things first, the Great Electric Trade Show is sponsored by Acura Scale, Helgen, TMC and West Hill Wagon Works. And all four of those will have big stands at the Great Electric Trade Show. Mm -hmm. And Acura Scale and Helgen are just two of the manufacturers that are taking part. Because we've also got manufacturer stands from Hornby, uh, Cavalix Models, Ellis Clark Trains, Revolution Trains. Uh, they're all coming to the show as well. So we've got a nice big lineup of, of manufacturers taking part in the event. Plus, like you say, shopping galore. Absolutely. I mean, you can get bargains all over the place. And of course, there's usually product announcements. There's new things that we can look at over there. Uh, I've been told that there's every hope that we could see an early sample of the uh, the new Ellis Clark Dumb D. Which, um, if that if that happens, I'm very much looking forward to that because they had that 3D printed version last yeah. year. Yeah. So if there's if there's a basic tooling sample yeah. there, I'm very much looking yeah. forward to that. And we know that the, the, the manufacturer stands there will have the latest engineering samples on display as well. Uh, and if you come over to the Key Model World stand, you'll be able to see all our latest pre-production samples of any of our limited editions. Um, so things like we'll have the Class 66 on display. Mm -hmm. We've got the HST power cars, um, the 40. Obviously, we've got the 31 sample. Um, we should hopefully, fingers crossed, have another one of the samples here in time for then as well. Um, plus, we've got some new kits to launch as well as part of the PGL exclusive range as well. So wonderful yeah. things to look forward to there. Well, there, of course, we're also going to have all our TT range as, as normal. The PJM kits that, you've, uh, that we've stopped before, we'll have more of them again. Yep. So, uh, And of course, we're debuting our 500 pound loud challenge. We are, yes. yes. Which I'm, I'm looking forward to because it's been, it was such a wonderful layout to construct. Uh, I know we've had a lot of fun playing with it over here. But to actually to show people what you can actually build from a realistic point of view with a very limited budget, I'm looking forward to see how people perceive it, how it's received. And of course, if, if you are coming to Gets and you want to ask us any questions, Mike, myself, Ben, Mark, we are here to answer all of your questions and just to show you what can be achieved on such a small budget. Absolutely. And they had to lock the layout away from me, so I didn't put any of the extra detail that I really, really am itching to do. So, you know. <laughs> so, so we are presenting it literally as we produced it for the series. Um, we haven't moved it on at all since then, but I have got lots of plans that I'm itching to get started with to enhance it and take it further. So it's going to be a, an absolutely fun, jam-packed weekend full of model trains and also connecting with people that we know and so forth. But let's talk now about some logistics for the weekend. Absolutely. So the, there is a football match taking place at the MK Don Stadium, which is right next to the Marshall Arena where the Great Electric Trade Show takes place. That means there is no parking available in the venue car park for Saturday, October the 12th. Uh, but you do have a number of choices. So there are lots of retail premises around where our venue is, and you can park in those. There are charges that apply, and sometimes they have time limits as well, so please be aware of those. Mm -hmm. uh, alternatively, if you jump on the Great Electric Trade Show website, we've got a couple of parking apps on there. So you can use those to find local parking. You can pre-book it and organise it that way. Or as a third alternative, we are doubling the number of buses running per hour from Milton Keynes Central Railway Station, where there is a lot of parking. Yes. Lots of lots of parking. There's multi-storey car parks, there's ground level car parks, another multi-storey car park, another ground level car park. Um, there's, there's literally parking everywhere around there. Um, so we're running a, a double-decker shuttle bus with stagecoach, which we use for all our previous railway shuttles from mm -hmm. the railway station to the venue, uh, every 15 minutes from Milton Keynes Central Railway Station to the venue on Saturday, October the 12th. So that gives you three choices. You can find your own parking around the venue in the alternative parking. You can um, park using the apps or you park at the railway station and like I say, shuttle bus every 15 minutes from 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, October the 12th. Wonderful. Now, what about Sunday? Sunday, much simpler. Turn up and you can park at the venue car park. The charges that are standard for that car park do apply for everyone parking there. So make sure you do pay for your parking before you leave. Um, but yeah, park at the venue. And the space is there. And obviously the free shuttle bus, again, for anyone arriving by rail, is running all day on Sunday as well, but at a half hour frequency. Absolutely. Now, as far as advanced ticket holders and VIPs are concerned, talk to me now about what's on offer, what you get, and how many tickets are still available. Right, so our tickets are still available right now for advanced purchase. So if you buy a standard advanced ticket for either an adult or a child, you will save over on the door prices. Um, kids go free on Sunday. So if you're coming as a family, then it's great because you can have up to two free children admitted with every adult that comes to the show on the Sunday. Um, like I say, those advanced tickets are standard are on sale now. Head over to keymodelworld.com forward slash great electric trade and you'll be able to find the details of how to buy your tickets. Um, advanced ticket sales for printed tickets will close October the 4th, but we will extend availability of e-tickets up until October the 10th. So you can buy your advanced tickets for a few weeks yet, but do get in quick, get in now. Um, and then if you want to become a VIP ticket holder, we do have a limited number of VIP tickets still available for the Great Electric Train Show. That includes access to our VIP lounge, which you can actually access from 9am 
Um, you still can't get into the show until 9.30 a.m., like the advanced ticket holders, but you can get into the lounge from 9 a.m. And we've got um, tea and coffee available in there as well. Uh, plus, you get some exclusive discounts on products from the Key World World Shop. You get a VIP lanyard, you get VIP pin badge, loads of little extras as well. So all those available to order now. Absolutely. Well, look, as we said before, this year's Great Legend Training Show promises to be a wonderful, huge event, just like it was last year and years before that. And we have made sure that every base is covered to make sure that whichever day or days you choose to come along, it's going to be a fun-filled event for you. Absolutely. And we're really looking forward to seeing everyone at the Great Legend Training Show. It's, it's such a great experience every time for us to actually be there and to meet the people that read the magazine, maybe Absolutely. online. You know, come and talk to us, ask us your questions, talk to us about model railways. It's what we love. Yeah. It's what we're there for. <laughs> Absolutely, indeed. So look, as Mike said, head over to kimmodelworld.com forward slash Great Electric Train Show. Make sure that you put it into your diaries the 12th and 13th of October 2024 at the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes. This is a show that you do not want to miss. We'll see you there. <laughs>